I thought it might be fun to make a little video of my neural network program. I wrote this around 1990. It was, it was in 1998 when I began it. I think I finished it maybe in early 1999. This was written in Borland C++ using C++ Builder version 1. And the graphics are a combination of the Windows GDI and OpenGL. I'm going to begin with a back propagation model with three hidden units, default learning rates, training on a conditioned inhibition design. So in conditioned inhibition, you have one stimulus. In this case, we're going to call it A. That is, say, paired with a U.S., something that would make an animal respond, like a food pellet. We're going to have another stimulus, C, that is also paired with the U.S., and the third stimulus, B. Now, B is going to occur with A, but the U.S. isn't going to occur. So the animal has to learn to discriminate between stimulus A, which predicts the U.S., and A and B together, in which nothing is going to occur. So after training, the results of the simulation look like this. First, the system learns that A and C both predict that something's going to occur, showing a large response. Then we start training where A and B together occur, but nothing happens. Initially, it does not discriminate A from A and B very well. It responds roughly the same to A as it does to A and B. But very quickly, it discriminates between them. It shows a stronger response to A than it does to A and B. And notice that the model continues to respond to C. After several hundred trials, what we're going to do now is ask, what does the model do if we now put stimulus B with C? Well, here's the response to C alone. It's very strong. If you take stimulus B and combine it with C, the model does not respond. It is as if it does not expect the food pellet. And this is exactly the type of behavior you would get in animals. So it's a very simple problem that our model was able to solve and find a solution to that mimics the, roughly mimics the way animals might solve the problem, and people as well. Here's what the model looks like. You have the inputs. In this case, this is the CS, the stimulus A, inside of a particular box or context. These are the hidden units, and this is the predicted output. These bars that connect them represent the mathematical um, values, the connection weights between the inputs the hidden units, and the output. Blue represents inhibition. Red represents positive numbers, excitation. And the brightness represents the absolute value of these numbers. And the brightness of these spheres also indicates the absolute value of the activation of these various units. Now, I'm going to run through the trial. So there's C, there's A and C, A and C. And you can very quickly see the weight's becoming excitatory. So given A, it turns on these units, which turns on the output. Given C, it turns on these units, which turns on the output. Nothing ever happens when the context alone is present. So the context shuts these units off. It inhibits those units. And here comes B. There's a and B together for the first time. And then C responds very strongly. It acts as if something's going to happen. But in a very few trials, it starts to discriminate. And you can see what's happening. B is forming inhibition with these hidden units. So A tries to turn them on, and B tries to turn them off. Now it's found a very interesting solution here. Well, not quite, but in general, these units tend to turn on the output, and B, the inhibitor, suppresses those units, keeps them from being turned on. Except for this unit here. It formed an inhibitory association. It actually tries to turn off the output. 
and B does not suppress that very much, which makes you know, a good deal of sense. Now this is a three-dimensional representation. of these hidden units. It's literally what they represent. So, let this unit represent x, this unit is y, and this unit is z. So I simply take these three activations and plot a point in the space where those activations are literally pointing. If we back up, we can see now that unfolds over time. So there's the context by itself, that little sphere. There's um, stimulus A, there's stimulus C. Initially, the model treats them more or less all the same. They're pretty much in the same place in this three-dimensional space. We run some trials. You notice that all three of the points move together, so initially the model is not discriminating the stimuli from the context. But now you see, there, there, stimuli A and C are being represented the same, but the context is being represented differently. That is, compression, stimuli that predict the same thing being represented together, and differentiation stimuli that predict different things being represented differently within the mathematics of the model. Now, here comes B. Initially, you see, the model does not discriminate between stimulus A and stimulus A with B. But very quickly, in a few trials, it sorts itself out, and it does. And you can see, it represents A and C, stimuli that predict something's going to happen, differently than it represents the context and the A and B stimuli together. Stimuli that predict nothing is going to happen. So we're showing properties of compression and differentiation. Here are all the points together. So you can actually observe the path of learning that it took sometimes be informative. Let's look at a different model real quickly. This is an autoencoder. This is based on Gluckenmeyer's hippocampus. Basically what this model has to do is learn to represent anything that is input to it. So we put in a context, it has to turn on the right context node. We put in a CS, it has to turn on the right CS node, and it has to predict whether or not the US is going to occur. It's alive. And it's probably learned the problem at this point. So, here's the context node being predicted here. CSA is on, and it's being predicted here. The US is supposed to occur, it's being predicted here. Here's a C trial. C is on, C is predicted, US is predicted. And here's an AB trial. A is on, B is on, A is on, B is on. So, with just these three hidden units, it has learned to represent everything that is input to it and predict whether or not the U.S. is going to occur. Now let's rewind and look at how it solved that problem. That looks like a mess, doesn't it? But we're going to see it's actually very logical. Let's look at our endpoints and link up our displays. There's the context. There's the CSA. There's C. So initially, it does not differentiate those stimuli at all. Very quickly, it learns to differentiate them. So it is now representing A and C differently than the context. Now, here comes B. 
Now it's learning to tell the difference between stimulus C and A. So unlike the previous model, this model knows that A is a different stimulus than C, and both of which are different from the context. But right now, it can't tell the difference between A and A and B together. Now it looks like at the level of the hidden units, the learning is just about finished. You can see things are not moving much. And you can see how the system, the model, solved its problem. It's very, very cute. Here is stimulus C. Here is stimulus A. Here, A and B together. Here is the context. It knows that those are four different stimuli. It represents each one individually and separately from the others. But look at how they're represented. This part of the space up here at the top contains things that predict an outcome. This part of the space down here at the bottom contains things that do not predict the outcome, A and B together in the context. Within the top space, it split it so that it can tell the difference between an A and a C. In the bottom space, it likewise split it so it can tell the difference between A and B together and a context. A and B together is more like A than it is the context, and so it put A and B over here in the same side of the space as where A is represented. This wasn't trained to do this. This is just how it solved the problem. It solved it in a very, what we think of as logical way. Let's show all of the points. Blow it up. And so there you can see literally how it solved the problem. Initially, everything's represented the same. It begins to move and begin to forget, differentiate C from A. We throw in B and it gets some confusion, but then it begins to differentiate A from A and B. Things that predict the U.S. are up here high on the y-axis. Things that don't are low on the y-axis. And this is probably the z-axis, I think, here, that's using to tell the difference between A and C for the context and A, B. So there's a lot that can be learned about these models by simply studying visually how these hidden units represent their information. Well, I believe that's about all I have to say about it today. If you've gotten this far, thanks for watching.